So this is a bit more of a casual video that I'm going to try and put out. It's essentially how to aim in Broad Thunder properly. And it's going to be using some of my experiences to better your aim, uh, leading and just general marksmanship. This is going to exclude any specific maneuvers. I will leave the maneuvering to you. But when it comes to having a gun solution and actually trying to take down an enemy, it is a different thing. So there are three things that I can think of, possibly a fourth if it comes to me, but three things just to keep it simple. The first one being parallax effect. Parallax effect is easily countered by aiming slightly above the enemy. If you are right behind them, the parallax effect is greatly increased. So therefore you have to aim slightly higher up. Let's assume a theoretical distance of 200 meters behind an enemy. You would have to aim about one or two meters above their canopy. We can assume that the aiming reticle of your game is an infinite distance away, or at least within 800 meters. So positioning the aiming reticle above the target, about two meters above the canopy, will land you more hits. If you are, let's say, 50 meters away from the target, right behind them, you might have to aim about five or six meters above um, the enemy. Which brings me on to my second point in aiming better, which is the angle of slip on your aircraft. This can be in the yaw axis and on the pitch axis. So with this taken into consideration, let's exaggerate it for better understanding. We shall say that if we are firing down at 45 degrees, we will say that the slip is 45 degrees down. Um, and so if we aim at a target, you'll see here that we actually miss it. So we put the reticle on the target, but we miss it because the bullets carry the aircraft's inertia when they leave the barrels of the weapons. And this same concept happens when you are at high speed and pulling high angle of attack and slip. So you also have to adjust for that. Normally, how you can counteract it is simply put to lead a little bit more. Just a little bit more. So let's say that you are attacking ground targets and you are overspeeding, which means that your angle of attack is minus two. You'll notice that you aim at the target, but the bullets go above the target. So the way to counteract that is to aim closer in and below the target if they are on the ground. This becomes less pronounced when you match speeds with the enemy. However, if you are shooting an enemy that is faster or slower, then this becomes a factor that you must consider. So the next thing that we are going to dive into is bullet trajectories and ballistics. So this is pretty much easily countered by adjusting for gravity and for the ballistics of the projectile. So these two things have to be taken into consideration when you are trying to shoot down something. Because gravity is a constant force, how far it drops is usually controlled by the velocity of the projectiles. Now, because the projectiles fly through the atmosphere, uh, the weight of the projectile is also important to consider in terms of how fast it decelerates. So picture throwing a heavy rock compared to throwing a ping pong ball, a slightly exaggerated thing. You most likely can throw a ping pong ball faster, but it will also decelerate a lot faster than the rock. And the rock may actually end up going way further because of the deceleration. They both follow the same arc the moment you let go of them. However, because of the deceleration of the ping pong ball, it takes a much steeper drop. So these things also must be considered. Usually the heavier, um, projectiles that say armor piercing compared to high explosive uh, is usually around 15 to 10 percent extra weight for the armor piercing therefore they will probably decelerate at the same 15 percent less and since in war thunder majority of the bullets are various so you can have you know a belt that has five different bullets and each of them have their own weights and velocities that they are fired out of the gun these things do also need to be taken into consideration, but they are, again, slightly insignificant, especially the gravity one. If you are firing vertical, then you don't really need to adjust for bullet drop. Thank you for watching this short uh, tutorial. I hope it's very useful. If you have any questions, just uh, feel free to ask me in the comments and any feedback, also post that in the comments. Like and subscribe as usual. 